Now, I myself do quite a bit of League Star testing before the League actually happens, running through the campaign and through early maps and getting some of the bosses done on a couple different types of characters. So I've got a pretty good handle on what you should be doing going from step one, starting out at the beach, all the way to the end of getting your watchstones in, finishing your atlas and starting your end game grind. And I know a lot of people struggle to get this done in a reasonable manner. Starting from the beach, how do you get through the campaign the fastest way? What should I be focusing on? Where do I go when I actually have gotten into maps? And with all of the new changes to the Atlas, uh, the wandering path doesn't exist anymore. So how should you actually choose your initial points in the Atlas? We're gonna go over all of that here. And if you aren't a new player and you're just interested in the Atlas strategy, there are timestamps and chapters down below so you can jump to that section so you don't need to skim through a whole bunch of just like basic stuff that you probably already know. Now if you enjoy these videos or they do help you out, make sure to give this video a like. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos. Without further ado, let's talk about how to get through the campaign and make your league start faster. So first thing is first, when you are actually moving through the campaign, the number one thing that you can do is just focus on moving forward and moving faster at all times. Any time that your character is not moving through zones, you are wasting time. So you should be thinking about what links and colors do you need? Are your resistances okay? Am I missing anything? Damage and survivability. And the idea is, is that when you do go through these zones, you can say, for example, I'm playing a Archmage Ball Lightning character here. It was something I was testing a while back, but I just never really had time to get around to it. But right now, um, for example, something that I would be thinking about as I'm moving through here is, well, are my resistances okay? Yes, my cold is a little bit low, so when I do get through the next couple of acts, most likely I am gonna need to find a little bit more room for cold resistance on my gear, which I don't have a ton of open suffixes. I've crafted on the ones that I do have access to. And beyond that, I don't really have a bunch more. My links are mostly okay, so I don't really need to worry too much about that. I've got the correct links for my wall lightning. I've got the correct links for my orb of storms. So for the most part, when it comes to single target, everything is doing okay. These are the kinds of things that you should be thinking about while you are actively moving through zones. You should also try to think about the fact that you really should not be killing absolutely everything. You wanna kill large packs of enemies. Like this is a huge pack of enemy. It's, it's worth sending a couple of attacks into it, right? It's worth getting these enemies down. However, if you're running by and there's say like three or four little humanoids over there, those aren't worth killing. They're gonna give you barely any experience and it's just simply not worth your time. So as I said, you should be focusing on movement. You don't need to kill every single enemy. Kill blue packs as long as they don't have really terrible mods. Like if you're a lightning build and they have resistant to lightning damage, skip them. There's no point. You're going to be over leveled if you kill absolutely everything. Another thing is to prioritize getting links for movement skills and the, keeping your Quicksilver Flask going constantly. Initially, in the beginning of the game, I'll show you where you get these, you will get access to two guaranteed Quicksilver Flasks. The first one is going to be in Act 1 when you get here to the coast. This zone, the Tidal Island, will have a quest that will make it so that Nessa will give you a Quicksilver Flask. That's the first one that you're going to get. In Act 2, as soon as you exit town to the right, you're going to go into the Old Fields, and there is a den in the Old Fields. When you go through the den, kill the final boss at the end, you'll go here to town, and Yina will give you access to your second Quicksilver Flask. You should be using, if you want to go fast, two Quicksilver Flasks at any given time. You rotate between these as they get charges, as you kill packs, and you just try to keep these up at all times. Movement speed is key here. On top of that, you should really focus on just getting movement speed on your boots themselves. The other stats are good, but the boots are probably going to be the piece of gear that you will rotate through the most. The rest of these pieces of gear, you can worry about getting your links, Ideally, I think that you should be getting your links on your chest piece, your helmet, and your gloves. As your weapons, you're going to want to swap around pretty often as you get upgrades to them, and your boots are gonna swap around as you just get more movement speed. So these things are pretty important to know. Next thing is gonna be having a basic idea of how your character is supposed to be leveled, where you're supposed to go on the passive tree. For the 20, 30 minutes that you have before the league actually begins, or maybe when you're sitting in queue, Load up your path of building and just see where you're supposed to be putting your points in. If it is a good quality League Start Guide, it should probably have 
incremental sections that show you what do you put in Act 1, in Act 2, in Act 3. Now, this is just going to be, for example, like my Lightning Arrow POB that I threw together for Last League. This isn't updated by any means, but it's mostly the same. The idea is that if you're playing a proper build guide, it should most likely have separate skill trees for at least each of the acts or at least every different lab that you're going to be going to so that you know what kind of progression you're supposed to be doing. So for example, early on, on say like a lightning based dead eye, you'll come out this way, you'll grab some of these mana, strength and intelligence nodes, as well as aspect of the eagle. Your main focus is going to be moving towards precise technique and point blank, moving over towards the right side of the tree a little bit more after you get some accuracy for your precise technique grabbing some aura nodes, moving up to the right, grabbing some damage nodes, so on and so forth, getting which labs in which order. You'll notice that in Act 3, I think it is, Act 4, you go for Gathering Ones first, and then as you move forward, you're going to go for Far Shot. Most quality leveling POBs should have this kind of information. So if you spend a little bit of time getting familiar with it, you'll know when you're in League that Maybe you don't always need to look at exactly what you're going to be going for each and every single time. You can just kind of be like, well, I know the vast majority of where I'm going and what I should be getting at any given time. And because I know those things, because I know kind of where I'm going, I don't have to spend as much time looking at all of the extra POBs and going back and forth and figuring out when and where and what you're supposed to do you'll kind of just get an idea for how you're supposed to be pathing on your character, and you can just go check every once in a while to make sure you're doing things correctly. This is a small optimization, but being familiar with the build guide a little bit is never a bad thing. The next big point is doing your lab trials and side quests as you go through the campaign. Now, when you are actually in game, I do suggest that as you get access to the Aspirants Plaza, the first time you're going to get this is in Act 3. I do heavily suggest you do it as soon as you feel comfortable doing it, because this first lab is going to most likely make your character significantly stronger in some way. That first ascendancy point on most builds is going to be really super impactful, especially for ascendancies like the Trickster, where you're going to get things like Polymath immediately, which gives you damage and recovery and mana recovery, energy shield, life, all that kind of good stuff very very important that you do it early so you're going to want to make sure that you do all of these different trials as you come across them one way that you can know is that as you enter each of these zones it will say complete the labyrinth trial in this area and if you go into your quests there will be a quest that says complete the labyrinth trial in this area if you're worried about missing one another thing like i said is side quests this is something that you're going to kind of have to just figure out, but certain side quests will give you access to passive skill points. You can type slash passives in the chat to see where you've gotten passives from so far, and after you've completed the campaign, you can type slash passives again and it'll tell you any that you have missed. But up to that point, it's not going to say anything. One final thing to think about is that this Merciless Lab that you see here, the third one, this is going to be something that I suggest you do before you fight the Act 10 boss. After you fight the Act 10 boss, you're going to have a massive drop in your resistances, and it'll be significantly easier if you do the third lab before that happens. If this is a time that you feel that your build needs a transfigured gem, this is probably the time to farm it. Get to that Merciless Lab, run it a couple of times until you get basically any good transfigured gem, sell it on the trade website, and buy the one that you need. Or if you're lucky, maybe you'll find the one that you're looking for. I have a guide on my channel that I made in the last couple of days that explains how to get T-gems, how to farm them, all that kind of good stuff. You can find it hopefully linked up in the top right corner now if I remember to put it up there, but if I don't, it's one of my last videos. And as said before, you should check your resistances after Act 5 and after Act 10. They get reduced heavily and you should be trying to keep your resistances at 75%. Those are the times to check them. Once you finish the campaign, you're going to end up in the epilogue. This is where you're going to want to check your resists, check your links, your life, your auras, defenses. Make sure that your character lines up with your League Start POB and everything looks correct. Make sure that your numbers look okay. Another thing to think about is have your basic Atlas strategy prepared. We'll talk about this Atlas strategy a little bit further down here. It's going to be past this watch zone section when I talk about where you should be putting your points and such. However, knowing where you're going is going to be relatively important because the Atlas tree can make or break your early league start mapping. Now, as for what you should be doing when you actually enter the Atlas, this is Path of Exile's end game. There are a ton of maps, as you can see here, 115 different points that you can get unlocked all the way up into tier 16 maps. 
You'll start down here at the beginning with these tier one maps and move your way slowly through each of these difficulty tiers, getting higher, more difficult, and have more lucrative rewards. Now, the main objective of this Atlas is to get the bonus reward on every single one of these maps. It'll say something along the line of kill boss of rare version of the map or kill boss of corrupted rare version of the map, kill boss of magic version of the map. These are the things that you should be looking for. I don't know if this is changing in the new Atlas. I thought I remember them saying something, but just keep an eye out for what is required of each of the different map tiers so that you can get the bonus objective. You'll want to get as many of these completed as you can because this is how you're going to get those points on your Atlas tree that allows you to move further into your end game. Now, starting to talk about the Atlas tree a little bit, Early on, Carrick missions are going to be insanely important. That's these nodes towards the middle. These nodes that give you your maps have a chance to grant you an additional Carrick mission on completion. These are going to be some of the more important nodes very early on, especially if you don't want to trade for your maps. You'll find them over here, here in the middle, as well as down here on the right. All of these nodes are very impactful. You should consider going them. We'll talk more about how and when to take each of these nodes in the Atlas strategy later on in the video. But let's talk a little bit more about Kirik himself. The reason why Commander Kirik here is so important is that when you speak with him and you try to purchase items from him, he will be selling you a wide variety of maps. Now this is way more than he's gonna have early on, but if you go to a map and you hold the Alt button, you'll see at the top it says Atlas Map Complete and Bonus Objective Complete. The whole idea behind Kirik is that he sells you a variety of maps. These maps could be ones that you need to be able to complete your Atlas. And whenever you do get a Kirik mission, he will give you an option of a bunch of different maps. Now, some of these, if you hold Alt once again, might be maps that you need to complete and you need the bonus objective from. However, this is not the only thing that Kirik does. So if we go to Kirik and we look at his initial map, it's a flooded mine and then a bone crypt. However, if I go here and I open a white Kirik mission, doesn't matter what it is, we wait for the portals up, we go back to talk to Kirik and look at his inventory, Bone Crypt and Port. And I have a Vortex here. Okay, that's extremely rare, but either way, you'll notice that his inventory of maps has changed. This means that every single time you get that bonus Kirik mission, run one of his missions and complete a new map, he'll have a new inventory for you that'll have more maps that you can grab, It'll help you get more completion early on, and this is going to be a very good engine for completing your Atlas super early on in the league. Now, when it comes to actually rolling these maps, it's relatively important that you roll your maps as difficult as you can reasonably handle. You should not be, you know, chiseling, alking, corrupting every single map that you ever do, but consider if you have extra currency and you have lots of alchemy orbs, and you're relatively powerful, there's no reason to not alk your maps as, as early as tier threes and tier fours. Go off of how much currency you have, go off of how many alchemy orbs and binding orbs you have available, but consider rolling your maps pretty early because if you do get more quantity, more pack size, you're just gonna get more maps, you're gonna get more items, you're gonna get more loot, and you're gonna be able to progress through your Atlas faster. That said, trying to do impossibly difficult maps that take 10 times longer than a normal one is not gonna do you any good. You should try to be making them as difficult as reasonably possible where you can still blast through them super quickly. This also goes into saying that once you do have the bonus condition for a map, you don't have to satisfy that bonus condition anymore. You don't need to corrupt every single red map that you're going to be finding. You'll run out of all orbs way earlier than you're able to do that anyways. So don't worry too much about corrupting every single one of your maps. The next thing to talk about are these watch zones, and this is going to be the main thing that allows you to upgrade your atlas. So you might have noticed how there are a bunch of low tier maps, mid tier maps, and high tier maps. However, you may have realized that some people farm basically any map as tier 16 later on. And the way that works is through these watch zones over here. Now these watch zones are going to do different things in the new league. They're going to provide a chance to give you tier 17 maps, which we are not going into in this video. It's very high end content. We'll talk about that a little bit deeper into the league. But these void zones are dropped from end game bosses that will be available to you as you progress through your atlas. And when you do put these void zones in, you will notice that your atlas changes and upgrades. Now, all of these maps, even down here at the very bottom, are going to be tier 16 maps. So you can farm any map that you want and it'll be at the highest level possible. And as you do different accomplishments, like doing some of the invitations and such, you'll get access to these favored maps which will let you focus on specific maps that you want to run more than other ones. Now, as for these watchstones, 
is a very specific way to go about to get these watchstones. And the first two that you'll be focusing on is going to be the Eater of Worlds as well as the Searing Exarch. These are the first two watchstone bosses that you'll be encountering. You'll automatically start finding them as you move through your atlas. It will be very obvious when it happens. You'll find some NPCs in a zone in a map that you do open. They'll tell you, oh, you need to go towards the Exarch or towards the Eater, and it'll give you a new option on your map device whenever you walk up here that allows you to choose influence. As you go through higher tiers of maps and put these different kinds of influence on them, you'll get closer and closer towards these endgame bosses, and then when you fight those endgame bosses and defeat them, they will drop these first two void stones. Once you've defeated these first two bosses, it will be significantly easier to maintain tier 16 maps. Because if we take these two out, you'll notice that about the top half ends up being tier 16. You have all the way up to here, roughly. So all of these maps will be tier 16. And if you don't know, maps typically prefer to drop maps that are connected to the ones that you're already running. If you're running a tier 16 map up here and you have one or two watch zones in, every single connected map is going to be tier 16, pretty much no matter what. It makes it significantly easier. And then once you get the next two watch zones, Every single map on the Atlas is tier 16, meaning only tier 16 maps can drop, which should make it so that you won't have any problems sustaining high tier maps. Now, as for progressing towards these next two bosses, which is the Maven and the Uber Elder, these are a little bit more difficult, but the Maven, you will use her influence, which is in the middle of the map device, to influence these different maps around the Atlas. Once you've done enough of them, she'll give you an option to go and do a kind of like arena battle where you can fight all of those bosses at once, drop some shards to her entrance fee fight, and then go and fight her later. She is a much more difficult boss than anything that you fought up to this point. Expect that it might take a couple of times for you to learn the boss fight and be able to accomplish it. But once you do, you'll get your third watch zone and then you'll be able to move towards going to Uber Elder. Uber Elder is probably going to be a little bit more annoying to progress towards. You're going to have to rely on drops from the end of map bosses that will give you access to specialty maps where the map bosses, the Shaper and Elder Guardians will give you access to fragments. When you put all those fragments together, you'll be able to fight the Elder and the Shaper separately, which also then drop fragments. And then if you take all of the fragments from them and put those together, then you'll be able to fight the Uber Elder and the Uber Elder will drop you the fourth watch zone. You could also just buy a carry for both of these things on TFT if you know what any of that means. In my opinion, the Uber Elder is the most difficult fight that you'll go to yet. It is more difficult than the Maven in my opinion. Maven is at least straightforward and relatively fair. The Uber Elder is an older fight that is a much more perfection based fight. The more that you mess up in that fight, the more permanent damage you cause to the arena and it makes it more and more difficult. And once you've got those four watch zones, you're pretty much done with the end game for the most part. There's still more pinnacle bosses to fight, uber pinnacle bosses to fight significantly later, but the next step is really going to be moving towards your Atlas strategy. And this is gonna be farming your Atlas so that you can make your character more strong so that you can do some of the super high-end content. So now for most of you that have jumped up to this section for the Atlas strategy, this is our Atlas strategy. As you may have known in some of my previous Atlas strategies, I am a huge fan of Pact with Energy. This node is really, really strong. And now that we don't need to worry about Nico missions and we can force him on the map, it's going to be even stronger because we'll basically always have it early on. So here's how we're going to go about doing our Atlas. The main things that we care about are getting Pact with Energy, all of the chance to get Nico in a map. So this is going to give us more maximum elemental resistance, a ton of extra damage, and a ton of extra move speed. It's just going to make our character move through these maps in the Atlas quicker, be more powerful, do more damage, and we'll have a lot less to worry about. Next thing we're going to care about is getting these Kirak mission nodes. Kirak missions are super powerful, like I said before, for being able to smooth out your early map progression and make sure that you're able to get your Atlas completed. Third thing we're going to be moving towards is actually Unwavering Vision. Now, I was hesitant on this node before, and Scarabs do seem to be good, but very early on, especially when you're doing your actual Atlas clear, 20 free points is really hard to beat, if I'm going to be honest. And you do path this way anyways to get some of these Nico mission, as well as some shrine stuff later. So this is just a free 20 points. So keep in mind, this 89 that you see up here, it's actually only 79 because we just get 
a free 20 here. And on top of that, I have some like extra bonus nodes that you don't necessarily need to take. So it's closer to 70, which is not that many in the scheme of things. After we get Unwavering Vision, we're going to go ahead and we'll grab these other Kyrick mission nodes to fill out all of the Kyrick nodes, as well as take some of these like adjacent map drop chance nodes on the way. From there, you can choose between two things. You can either grab these map nodes, which I think is probably the correct play because you'll most likely be struggling a little bit to get your higher tier maps, or you can immediately go for the the Nico chance nodes. You can just go for these right away and get Nico in every single one of your maps, get this packed with energy going immediately, and then get the map nodes. You can do either or first. It doesn't really matter. Choose what you would like. After that, I would say you would want to go for these shrine nodes. These are just going to give you a bunch of extra mobs in your map, make you more powerful, and just in general, give you an easier experience through your Atlas. And then last but not least, you can grab some very simple nodes like Trial of Glory if you want to get some more labyrinth trials for a chance at these like nice special labyrinth entrance keys, which can sell for a lot, as well as some nodes like an Honest Job, which is going to give you the Gravekeeper's Boon, which as far as I know, gives you like a, it, it like consumes a corpse and heals you or something like that every few seconds for 30 seconds, I think is what that does. So there's some, some minor cool stuff that's available all throughout. So that's realistically what you should be doing as your first Atlas tree. Now, based on the reveal trailer and what we know, you should be getting a second Atlas tree at some point while clearing your initial one. So what I would suggest that you do is focus on getting this tree set up properly for a new character or a character that's going to be moving through the Atlas, just trying to get a bunch of, you know, just nodes that'll make your character more powerful, make it easier to level up. Because if you ever do make a second character or a third character, you can swap to this Atlas fill it out with maybe a bunch of extra stuff beyond this, like whatever else you would like, and just use it to level up a lot faster and then swap into your in-game farming one later. Whenever you do get that second farming tree, then you can take that new tree and do whatever you'd like. I, for example, am most likely going to do the classic Legion farm early. We can have like, five legions in every single map now because you can use multiple legion scarabs and a bunch of a bunch of sergeants and all kinds of cool stuff so that's most likely what i'm going to be doing but i'll talk about that a little bit more a bit into the league and that's going to be it for the video hopefully this was helpful i know it was a lot of information and you may not have needed some of that in there but for new players or people who are looking for a refresh there's a lot of good information about how to get through the campaign faster how to move through the atlas in kind of a at least targeted manner where you know where you're supposed to be going going at any given time. I hope this video helped and you have a great league start. And remember boys, if you enjoyed this content, make sure to give this video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, hit that notification bell to stay up to date with all the latest videos and stay safe out there in Rayclast. And I'll see you guys in the next video.